Hello, my name is John Hellebrandt with GlideFast Consulting and today I wanted to show you some tips and tricks when working with variables and variable sets in a catalog item. Uh, as you can see we're in the request for backup catalog item and I have made some additional variables and put them in a container and I've also created some additional checkboxes. As you might know um, when working with catalog items the order dictates where they show up on the form. So if you look over on the portal I've got uh, a number of variables in a container, um, these four here, um, and the container is customer information, and I have them spread, up, spread out across two columns. Um, originally, I had the special requirements, which is a multi-text field, in the container, but as you'll notice when starting to work with these, that uh, it will actually just show up over here. Uh, and what you might want to consider doing is moving uh, large multi-text fields outside of a container and putting them underneath. Um, I can show you an example here. Uh, we can put this at 600. I redo the order here. And you'll see that it's inside the container. But when you re refresh the portal side, uh, the behavior is not quite you'd expect. So it's best when using multi-text fields to maybe keep them outside of the container. Update the order and it will be outside of the container and it looks a lot neater this way. Um, also keep in mind that when you're working with containers you can display the title and uh, we have customer information as a title but one thing to keep in mind is that when you're using containers um, try to stay consistent throughout the catalog item so if you're using if you're displaying the title on one container you'll want to display the title on other containers you create just to stay consistent across the entire form um, I'm just going to uncheck this and then we go back out here into the portal and refresh you'll notice the title is now not displayed. So right now we have four different uh, variables inside a container. Other things, another thing I want to show you is variable sets. Uh, now variable sets, uh, they're very nice to have because um, you, can you, you can create a bunch of variables inside it. Think of it like a bucket uh, or a box, right? You, you can create a bunch of variables within that variable set. So if we drill down into this, you'll see a number of variables in here. Now the order inside the variable set dictates the order which they'll be displayed. The variable set itself has an order as well. And that is 100. Now if we go over here, you'll see this customer information container start at 100. So if we change this to 150 for instance, and we leave this variable set at 100, see if you can guess what would happen. Let's go out here to portal. It puts all of those fields within that variable set at the very top of the form because that is the first, that's the first in its order of all the variables. So keep that in mind. Uh, if you have a number of variables inside a variable set, if you put them, whatever order you put them in, all of those variables will show up as a group in that, in that particular order you put them in. Also, working with checkboxes, I've had a few people complain in the past of, of some odd behavior. They, they, they're curious how to get rid of it. Uh, you'll see that I have three checkboxes here, checkbox one, two, and three. Uh, but you'll see a little options label on top of this. This is something that ServiceNow puts in there um, automatically if you don't have. It groups the checkboxes together and puts options on top. You can get around that by actually creating a label. So if we create a label at 775 and we can just call it checkboxes Okay, now we have a label there above the checkboxes. If we go out here and refresh the page, it'll actually show the label that you created instead of the 
of what ServiceNow puts there, just called options. There is another way around this. If it doesn't make sense to have a label above the checkboxes, what you can do, let me get rid of this label here. What you can do uh, is add a container split in between each of the checkboxes. We want to put one at 850. So we have one at 850 after the first checkbox, and then we will put one at 950. And now you can see there is a container split in between each of these checkboxes. Let's go out here. Now what's, what you'll notice is there'll be a little bit more space in between the checkboxes. So now you won't see the options label, you won't see the label you created because we deleted it. You'll see a little bit more spacing between the checkboxes. So they're they're not grouped together anymore. They're kind of their own checkboxes. So if they stand alone uh, as their own variables, you can actually use that as a solution. Uh, now working with catalog UI policies, as you notice I have, you can check any one of these, but if you check the third one, I have an extra field that is displayed. Now, if you uncheck it, it will be hidden again. Uh, it's required and in, in, in invisible if you if you select the third checkbox. And I will show you that here. So we, we, we check, the condition is, we check to see if the third checkbox is true. It's a Boolean value. It's a yes, uh, it's either true or false. So that's what a checkbox uh, checks for and uh, if it is true then it will display this field the the checkbox 3 explanation and make it mandatory now we have this field on here called reverse if false so what that means and that's why we can keep clicking it and unclicking it'll show visible and then it'll be not visible visible not visible as well as mandatory not mandatory uh, if you have a lot of variables with a lot of different um, behavior in it you may want to consider not using the reverse of false. I found that uh, working with large, very large items with like 50 variables that have a, a, a lot of different behavior, you have uh, different mandatory fields and whether they're visible or invisible depending on, or not visible, depending on the outcome of other fields. Sometimes better uh, to create uh, UI policies and actions for each condition. So. Uh, for instance, if we had this as true, you'd uncheck this and you'd you'd have a condition, you'd have fields uh, down here that are either mandatory, visible, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then you'd create another UI policy in action for when the checkbox is false. Um, and you will find that you can play around with that um, to see what works best. But sometimes it's better for larger catalog items to just not use this because you get some odd behavior and you won't get the behavior lo you're looking for. So if that's the case, try unchecking these and creating UI policies and actions for each scenario. Um, this is very simple. So we just, we can use the checkbox and it'll show up and it'll be hidden again when we uncheck it. Thank you for uh, watching the tips and tricks on variables and variable sets in catalog items. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.